Big Mike here with Hayes Entertainment. Today's episode, we got two Canadian beauties. We got Ethan Keppen of the Vancouver Canucks and Mason Primo of the Vegas Golden Knights. If you like what we're doing, you hit the subscribe button. We got mugs. We got hoodies. Head on over to the store at IonlyTouchGreatness.com. My name's Ethan Captain. I'm drafted by the Vancouver Canucks in 2019, and I'm on the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. Hi, I'm Mason Primo. Uh, I was drafted by the Vegas School of Knights in 2019, and I'm on the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. <laughs> this is the hottest place, 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 in Vancouver Hayes, Hayes, Hayes. with Ryan Hayes and Big, Big Mike, Mike Vancouver selects Ethan Keppen with Firebirds This is I Only Touch Greatness podcast yeah. with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike Script. Holmes has Kepin, found Kepin, one-timer, he scores! Kepin has spent the past two seasons playing for Flint in the OHL. He tallied 30 goals and 59 points last year. and Big Mike are taking over the podcast scene in Vancouver. Get down or lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Now goes to the right corner. There'll be another. And the linesman stand back as Hall with a quick punch. And Primo goes down. He gets back up and Hall again connecting with the right. Primo's trying to come back with a couple of rights. Primo and Hall, two big young men going at it in the... Coyotes in. Now they exchange more punches. Lefts and rights like rock'em sock'em robots out there. Primo and Hall continue to throw punches and the linesmen now come in. If anyone knows a good prospect, it's Vancouver's mini Don Cherry. Let's go crazy. He only touches greatness. Mason, Ethan, how's it going, man? What's going on? How's it going? How much? Big Mike, nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you, too. I got a special guest with me today. Mini Don Cherry. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> oh. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Good, thanks for coming on, taking the time. No worries. No worries. Hopefully, Ethan, you'll be seeing me at Canuck Games. I dress like this at Canuck Games. Oh, yeah. I'd love to see that. Yeah. What uh, made you guys get into hockey in the first place? And did you guys play any other sports growing up? Up, you want to start? Uh, sure. So, um, how I started playing hockey, um, pretty much just started my older brother playing when uh, he's two years older than me. He started before me, and that kind of motivated me to play. And my father, uh, he played as well growing up, uh, but never made the big shot at all. Um, at all. So uh, that's how I started. started when I was three years old. Um, so I started from there. And any other sports I uh, played, I grew up playing soccer a bit. Um, and I uh, played a bit of basketball too, but I'm mostly just a hockey guy now, so. Uh, I mean, I, I started playing hockey when I was about four. Uh, for me, it was kind of a family thing. I mean, uh, I was fortunate enough to see my dad play, and uh, I kind of fell in love with it from a, from an early age, and uh, I kind of knew it was something I wanted to pursue. But I also played lacrosse growing up. I played played for the Mimical Mountaineers, which is uh, by my place in Etobicoke, um, and uh, I played up until I was about 16. So uh, those are the two sports I played. Okay, yeah, me too. I'm a hockey. I'm a huge lacrosse guy, though, now. Yeah, cross is awesome. Any uh, nicknames, and what's your guys' favorite jersey number, and why? Uh, my, my one nickname that that's been with me ever since I started playing is Kep, just for short for my last name. Um, hockey numbers, I I started wearing number four um, when I started playing when I was number um, when I was three years old. Um, what motivated me to wear that was just I was a big Bobby Orr fan. I don't know why. Uh, um, so 
yeah, I started there. Then when I made rep hockey when I was seven years old for the Ajax Knights, that's when I started wearing number 92 and pretty much just stuck with that number. Uh, well, uh, for numbers for me, uh, I always grew up wearing 18. Um, I wore it because when my dad played for Calgary, he was 19. Uh, that number wasn't available, so I took the next closest, which was 18. Um, and then uh, he ended up wearing it with the Leafs. So I, I grew up wearing that number through all of minor hockey. And then uh, I wear 19 with North Bay now because uh, when I was dealt there, 18 was taken. But it's grown on me. So th those are the two numbers. Okay. Mason, uh, obviously, it must have been nice growing up with uh, Uncle Keith and Dad Wayne and obviously cousins Caden and I can't remember the other cousins' names, but they, they still play hockey too. Uh, what are they, how was the competition growing up or motivation and what did you learn on and off the ice? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously uh, a pretty cool situation to have a, a dad and uncle who play in the NHL. I mean, I don't remember much of my uncle's career because I was pretty young, but uh, obviously with YouTube now, you can kind of watch. And uh, I do remember my dad just going to the dressing room after games. And um, I, I think I played a lot of mini sticks while I was playing. So I'm not sure I watched too much, but same thing like YouTube. And uh, he coached me all the way up. So uh, that, 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 that was a big influence for sure. Uh, and then with Caden and my other cousins as well, um, you know, every Christmas growing up, we got together and uh, we'd skate in Oshawa, which is just outside of Toronto. Um, and we do like Christmas skates, but besides that, they live in the States, so don't get on the ice with them much, but, um, obviously whenever we see each other, it's uh, nice to talk hockey. You ever hit the YouTube, you ever hit the YouTube and look up when your uncles fought each other? Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, your uncle and your dad I hear that one a lot. Um, uh, I mean, that's my dad always laughs. It's usually the first thing people bring up when, uh, when they meet him is, you know, that you fought your brother, but, um, yeah, it's. It's funny. I mean, <laughs> I don't think my grandparents were too pleased with it, but uh, <laughs> it was the heat of the moment. And, uh, it's definitely a cool story to be able to tell. Not many people could say it. It definitely is. Do you have a yeah. favorite sports hero? Uh, for myself? Both of you. Cap, you take this one. You go ahead. Uh, sports hero growing up. Uh, I, like what I said, I was a Bobby Orr fan. Um, that goal he scored in the Stanley Cup final against St. Louis when he was flying in there. That kind of, uh, this is a pick I always look at every day. I actually got a framed picture of that in my uh, bedroom at my dad's house. So uh, I enjoy looking at that. So that's probably my sports hero for sure. Uh, for me, I'd probably say it's a pretty cliche answer, but it's hard not to say Sidney Crosby just because, I mean, he's a Canadian hero and, I mean, with my generation, he was a guy that we all grew up watching. So, um, you know, whether it's, you know, watching his Penguins teams win those cops or the Golden Hill goal in 2010, I mean, that's a guy that it's pretty hard to not look up to. So uh, I think I'd say him. What was the biggest transition for you guys uh, heading to the OHL? Um, for me, uh, coming in as a 16-year-old, um, it was pretty tough. Uh, I'd say the difference between going from minor major to the OHL is obviously the speed level. Um, so as for me, I had to get uh, my speed up and, and just work on that a lot. And I noticed that the games were really fast. So it took, it was a tough transition for sure. It probably took me maybe a, close to a couple months just to get used to it. But now it, it, it's going well for me. I feel like I'm on the top for sure in, in the speed level. Um, so that would be my biggest transition from the minor major to the OHL for sure. Uh, I think for me, just being a, you know, tall, skinny kid, especially coming in from minor major to junior, just the biggest thing I know is, is just getting stronger and working on my skating. And um, I think that's something that, you know, no matter what level I play at, it'll always be something I have to work on just because, you know, when you're, when you're taller, you have your advantages, but you have to fill out for sure. So I think just, you know, the biggest thing I learned after my first year is just, to, to work hard in the gym and continue to put on strength and size and work on my skating and, um, you know, trust, trust the rest, trust the rest of it kind of thing. So I think those are the two biggest things. Take me back to your guys' uh, first goal in the OHL. And do you guys still have the puck? Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know the exact date, but it was my uh, second game uh, of the season. We were on our road trip. From, first game was in Kitchener and we were playing no one sound the next night. So we came I came off probably a first tough game in the OHL, only playing like a few few shifts, five shifts around there, and 
I'm going no one shot the next day. It was coach was rolling the line, so I felt pretty good. It's probably my second shift of the game. Uh, I got a nice uh, tap and goal somewhere there, just crashing the net, so it felt pretty good. Uh, so, yeah, I still have the puck with me. It's in that little glass case in uh, my bedroom, so it's good awesome. to have that. Absolutely. It's a memory you don't want to ever forget. For sure. Uh, for me, it was uh, – I think it was about my 10th game. Uh, we were playing at uh, Budweiser Gardens against London. Um, I just got it on the four track and the D turned it over. Um, one of my teammates picked it up and made a, made a pretty nice pass to me. And uh, I got it around the hash marks and shot and, and it went in. And uh, it was pretty cool. I mean, London's a pretty big market and pretty big rival of Guelph. So um, scoring there and um, kind of silencing the crowd and stuff was pretty cool. Uh, and, I, and I still have the pocket I have it in a little glass case. It's in my closet. So uh, it's probably where I'll hold on to. So it was a pretty cool moment. Awesome. Uh, do you guys have a favorite movie about sports? Um, yes. Um, recently, there's a, there was a documentary that just came out, the Michael Jordan documentary, The Last Dance. So it's mostly a series, but that's a series I've been watching a lot ever since uh, it came out. So this whole um, pandemic, I've just been watching that. <laughs> like, I've watched the series maybe – five times right now. Oh, really? So, yeah. Uh, I'm a big basketball fan, um, but, like, just learning about, like, how Michael Jordan was, like, one of the best players of his game, it just motivates me to work harder uh, in my sport, which is hockey. So, I love watching that a lot. And so, yeah. Yeah, I, I like that documentary, too. It was unreal, but I, I'll say probably a miracle uh, of the Olympic team in 1918. I just... I don't know, it's just something I grew up watching a few times. And, uh, I mean, watching it now, it's kind of cool. It brings back a lot of memories. And, you know, just – just a, I think it's probably the one of the first really big hockey movies. And, um, it, obviously, by Disney, they did a pretty good job with it. So, I mean, I love watching that one. And it's pretty inspirational. You know, you see the classic underdog story and uh, just a team that worked hard and now competed the – now competed their team and – um, you know, there's a lot of lessons to learn from us. So I think that would be the one I'd pick. Okay. Ethan, take me back to the draft day, buddy. 122nd overall to uh, our hometown, Vancouver Canucks. Vancouver selects Ethan Keppen. Um, yeah, so uh, it was the second day of the draft. My whole family came down. We flew down from home. I probably had 20 people there. I had all, all my family. I had my cousins, my uncles, uh, grandparents. Uh, even had my Villa family came down, my skills coaches as well. Um, so it was good to have them there to support that. And we were all sitting down. It was a it was a long day that second day. And hearing my name called by Vancouver, the whole city, it was pretty special to me. And I knew Vancouver was a team that had a lot of interest in me. Um, so I was pretty happy to be selected by them. Um, I know they're a great organization that has a great coaching staff as in Travis Green and a lot of great players on our team that are on the rise as well, like Brock Besser, Quinn Hughes, Elias Patterson, Bo Horvat. Just players I enjoy um, being around, which I have been in the camps before. Um, so, yeah, it was a special day. Just throwing that jersey on in front of the whole crowd just felt pretty special to me. And I, yeah. I probably think about that moment every day uh, as of today. Yeah, we were all there at the draft too. We were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was special. It's awesome. How did you, how did your first cam go in your eyes? Uh, other than taking the puck to the face, I was actually there. So Oh yeah. Oh I remember that. Uh, it was first first practice of the development cam. It might have been the second drill or sign. I go in front of that to screen a goalie and then unlucky deflection that just went straight to my face, saw it out of nowhere. But it was <laughs> It kind of hurt a bit, but it didn't show any emotion at all. Just got my face cleaned up and went back out there and forgot about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought your camp went well, to be honest. Thank you. Uh, off to Mason. Take me back to draft day. 141st overall to the Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah. Uh, well, my family and I decided to stay home for the draft. And uh, we were just kind of sitting in my living room. And, um, you know, I knew Vegas had shown interest in me because I talked to them a couple times throughout the season. Um, and I was we kind of watching it, but not watching it. I mean, it was getting a little bit later and uh, we were getting a little bit nervous, but 
um, you know, I, I thought I heard my name, but I wasn't sure. And uh, sure enough, my name came up on the screen and um, lots of tears and hugs and laughter and excitement and uh, being picked by Vegas, the team that had only been in the league for a few years and a uh, pretty cool city to be picked by too. Um, it was super exciting. Um, you know, I was obviously thrilled about it, something you dream about for, you know, I mean, for myself, as, uh, especially from a young age and, um, no, I was super thrilled by it and, um, it was a great moment. I definitely won't forget it. Who do you guys mirror your game after or try and play like? For me, uh, I mull after my game. Uh, Matthew Kachuk from the Calgary Flames plays a good two-way game. He's very offensive as well. He plays a gritty game that can be physical and loves to shoot the puck on that. So, and never afraid to go in the corners at all. So that's what I play. I, um, I play a good physical ability game. That's never afraid to go in the corners. Love to shoot the puck and create a lot of space for my line mates as well. Um, so yeah. Good. That's what we need out here right now. Yeah. Yeah. What's it like? What's it, what's it like playing with another beauty guest of ours? Uh, Brennan Offman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Otter's a, Good, good skill teammate to have. A uh, great guy in the dressing room as well. I actually was a stall man, and it was good to uh, teach him the ropes a bit. As as I'm one of the oldest guys now on the team, but yeah, he had a great rookie season. I couldn't be more proud of him, and he's gonna have a good draft year next year for sure. And Mason, who do you mirror your game after? Try and play like. Yeah, I mean, uh, especially I think this year after watching the playoffs, uh, guys like Charlie Coyle and Pierre Luc Dubois. You know, guys are a big center and play both ends of the ice. Um, aren't afraid to be physical and, uh, like Ethan said, create space. And um, I, I think the biggest thing is just using their body to protect the pucks. They're bigger guys and uh, just being difficult to play against. So I'd say those two guys, I mean, I've grown to really like their games. And uh, like I said, I, I paid real close attention to this playoff. So uh, those are two guys I, I tend to watch quite a bit. Definitely good choices. Do you guys yeah. have a favorite road barn? Favorite road barn for me would probably either be uh, the Sleeman Center in Guelph or the Budweiser Gardens in London, for sure. Just a lot of good energy in both buildings, usually packed buildings, and I usually play good in those buildings as well. Yeah, we hear we hear London a lot. Yeah. Uh, I love playing at the Odd, uh, Kitchener. That's definitely my favorite. I also love playing in Niagara. I like the odd because um, it's kind of a little bit of an old school rink and they have the the stands that are, you know, pretty shallow and they go up super high. So I think that's pretty cool because you get like a wall of people behind you, behind the bench, which is, uh, you don't see much anymore. Um, and I, I just like it because they, they get, you know, great, great fans. And uh, early on playing Guelph, that was our biggest rival. It's only about 20 minutes away. So um, we played them in the playoffs my first year too. So, uh, I, I love playing there. And Niagara uh, is a newer rink, and they're in our division uh, in North Bay. So uh, I like playing there. I think it's just a great rink, and it's another team that does really well with fans. So it's a fun place to play. Sweet. Any pregame meals or rituals? I'm just plain and simple. Uh, red pasta and chicken, uh, chicken parm around there. Uh, just get my carbs in. It's always been my meal before a game. Uh, I mean, I'm not too picky. I mean, chicken, potato, rice, whatever, protein, and from carbs. Like, it's not. I don't have anything specific. I eat just uh, try to try to keep it healthy and uh, just something that gives me energy for the game. And then uh, rituals. Uh, there's quite a few. I mean, depends depends on how things are going, how, how my rituals look. But um, I don't know. Just kind of the same routine. Get to the rink, uh, shower get in my Under Armour, take my sticks, you know, play sewer with my teammates and do my own little warm-up, warm up with the team. And then uh, by then it's, you know, on ice warm-ups and then game time. So those are probably uh, my, my superstitions, I guess you could say. What color Gatorade do you like? Red for me. Okay. I don't know why, just prefer uh, I like blue and yellow. Those are my two favorite. I can't, can't pick one, but. Uh, if I have the option, I'll, I'll, I'd, I'd choose those two. All right. What's your guys' go-to celly? Uh, probably just put my uh, hands in the air, then then tuck them close. And... 
just scream so loud. That's just me. Stick the tongue out of it. Uh, yeah, I'd say the same. I'm not super creative when it comes to celebrating. I just get pretty excited, maybe a scream, throw my stick in the air kind of thing, and, uh, you know, wait for my teammates to come give me a hug kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, not, nothing too crazy. I tell everybody every time that my go-to Sally is John Cena's You Can't See Me. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, in goalie, right in the goalie's face. Usually the other team can't stand it. Beer league. I'm the only guy gets kicked out of beer league hockey every week. <laughs> That'll do it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your guys' uh, go-to music before the game? For me, uh, my my go-to music would just be uh, would be anything. I don't have anything like uh, prefer. I would either play some rock music like ACDC, something like that. I don't Throw on some rap once in a while, like Drake, Kanye, uh, Jay Z, all those guys, and DJ and Flynn would be Cody Morgan. Uh, he just uh, he throws on all these classic tunes, which I like, all the rock songs, all like that. So yeah. Uh, before games, I'd say uh, country music, uh, EDM, rock. I'm not super picky, like whatever kind of. Gets me fired up. And then in North Bay, the DJ was Matthew Struthers, and then he got traded. Uh, so then it was our, our captain, our Luke Moncada. So uh, th those were the DJs of the room. And th their music taste is pretty good. He, he, has a, he has a playlist he plays. It gets a little repetitive, but uh, it's pretty good music. So I can't complain. Do you have a favorite sports quote? Um, um, maybe. I probably just uh, think about the Muhammad Ali uh, quote. It's like it sucks practicing and training, but it feels good to be a champion, and it all pays off. So it goes something like that. But that's the quote I think about. Okay. Well, it's put me on the spot with that one. I don't, hey, I, oh, I don't think I have one off the top of my head, to be honest. I'm just trying to think. I might I might take too long to to figure one out, but. It's all good. It's all good. What's been your guys' uh, go-to quarantine snack? For me, uh, hmm, this is a tough one. Usually my mom uh, gets me my favorite cereal, Frosted Flakes, so I'll probably have a couple bowls of that. Today, so Mason knows that one, too. Uh, for me, go-to quarantine snack. Um I, know, I like hummus and crackers sometimes or uh, Greek yogurt, something like that. Nothing too crazy. Pretty simple. <laughs> what were uh, some of the weirdest questions you guys got during the draft? I'm trying to think about it. It would probably be um, in the draft. Gosh. I don't think I got many weird questions. There was probably like there's a few questions that was repeated, like the same. He's like, oh, uh, uh, are you happy that it was Vancouver? Stuff like that. So it could get annoying there. But so not really many weird questions at all. Yeah, I mean, I didn't go to the combine or anything like that or the draft. So, um, I mean, the only questions I got were kind of over the phone or if teams came and watched me after games. Um, can't really think of anything in particular. But I, I think, like, the biggest thing would be, like, um, if you said something, you know, you felt pretty strongly about it and they disagreed with you and you kind of had to work your way out of it. Um, I think those are good because it just challenges you to, to, to think and kind of stay on your ground. So I, I can't remember anything specific, but those kind of questions were pretty tough. You had to, you had to kind of think on it and uh, give, give them a good answer. So Yeah, we, get a, we got a couple that we've heard over the last few years. Um, if you were an animal, what would you be? Uh, for me, it would definitely be maybe a rhinoceros, maybe. <laughs> there you go. I like bold. it. I like it. Big and bold, just fierce. Be huh? scary. Uh, for me, uh, I'm trying to think. Say, say maybe a giraffe because I'm super tall. <laughs> um, that's, that's the only parallel I can draw. But that's uh, that's probably the animal I'd pick. A couple other ones we've heard is uh, well, the weird ones, anyways. Were like, 
who do you save on a burning house? If you got to save one of either your mom or your dad, that's a tough one. Uh, yeah. Another another ones we've heard are uh, if there's twenty bucks on the counter, you can have for free, or there's a hundred bucks in the toilet, bottom of the toilet. Which one do you go for? Whoa. And then ah. uh, not, another one is uh, you you guys get a big team win. It's also a teammates uh, party, uh, birthday party at the bar after. So you guys go out to the bar. Half the team leaves, half the team stays. What do you do? Uh, for that first one, if I those have to questions, I've heard those ones before. I've also heard like if you're at a gun in a row, is which one would you pick? Um, stuff like that. Like they, they try to throw people off for sure. Like I think that's part of the part of the game plan. Like see how you react. Of course. Yeah, they, they want to know how you'd panic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How do you guys uh, describe your game and what do you guys bring to the table? For me, I just play uh, a big power forward game that goes up and down the ice, uh, just drives in that hard, uh, moves well in the corners and able to create a lot of space for my alignments and just loves to shoot the puck and can play any situation in the game. It could be penalty kill, power play, uh, if we're up by a goal, um, defend pretty good. And so the other team doesn't score. If we need a goal, I can go on try to get one for the team uh yeah i'd say a two-way power forward um you know playing center i think the biggest thing is you have to be getting both ends um you know using your size all over the ice whether it's you know in your own end or in the offensive end uh you know being being hard to play against and uh and you know just just um you know trying to create offense for myself and my teammates but like i said also also being good on the other side of the puck and uh, making whoever my opponent is, making a tough night for him. Do you have a personal highlight or a personal low light? I probably got to think of this one, Mason. You can go first. Um, just trying to think. Uh, I mean, personal highlight so far, hot and hot and, you know, for hockey would be probably getting drafted last year to Vegas. Um, I mean, that's a pretty easy one, I think. Like I said, it's something that you know a lot of kids who play junior, especially and um, play hockey growing up. It's it's something that they always dream about, and um, I was fortunate enough to hear my name called and uh, being called by Vegas was really cool as well. So uh, that that'd be a highlight for me. A highlight for me, uh, was just debating on it. It was either my scoring my first goal in the OHL or it was uh, last year. Uh, I got to play an exhibition game in a split squad game uh, versus Calgary with Vancouver. So I think that would be my biggest highlight for sure. Um, just after main camp, we flew to Calgary from Victoria and I got to play a game in the Salad Dome, which was pretty special. I got to play against the greats like Johnny Gaudreau, uh, Sean Monahan, Sean Giordano, uh, some of those guys. So it was pretty special. And we got the doubt in that game. Nice. That's awesome. And uh, Ethan, uh, what's it like playing for your country, buddy, and representing uh, Canada? Yeah, uh, that was pretty special uh, being uh, called to play U-17s for Team Canada White in BC. Um, it was in Dawson Creek and Fort St. John. It was a great tournament. It was a lot of fun. We had a great team. Unfortunately, we didn't get a medal. We lost in the bronze game, but... Uh, just had a great group of guys and wearing that logo on my jersey was pretty special and having my I had some of my family come down and watch that which was uh pretty special to me and uh get i got to keep my jersey which was also special and got it in my closet and look at it all the time that's awesome yeah that's a memory another memory man like uh keep that stuff one day down the road you're gonna want it trust me a lot of guys don't think of that kind of stuff like yeah. they think oh what do i need my first puck for what do i need my first jersey for one day you're gonna want it mm -hmm. what challenges did you come across in getting to where you are today you see you can go um i mean obviously i think um, for a lot of people, I think, you know, some people probably don't realize that hockey is a very mental game. Um, you know, there's definitely times where, um, you know, you're down on yourself or your confidence is super high. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've learned, especially in junior, and, um, you know, especially this past year is you, you got to try to stay even keel and, um, you know, just put your head down and work hard. And, um, uh, I mean, 
that's that's probably the biggest thing is just you know working to to you know keep yourself even and um, deal with you know highs and lows from a young age. I think it's something that hockey teaches in particular pretty well. So I'd say those are those are the things. Yeah, just following up with Mason is probably my mental game as well. Uh, in hockey, you're always not going to have a good game. There's always bad games in the mix as well, and you got to be able to step back up from from all that stuff. So, obviously, there's a lot of things in life that goes on. Hockey is just uh, one thing you do. There's a lot of important things in your life, like family and stuff. So, other things can happen in life that could uh, bring your game down, but you always got to have a, a strong mental mind and a short-term memory for sure. Um, that's what I come across for sure after a tough game or a brutal game that I just played. I always have a short-term memory and forget about it for that next game. Hey, uh, Ethan and uh, Mason, we can't uh, thank you enough for taking your guys' time today and coming on for us. Uh, we really appreciate it. We're big fans of both yours, and we can't wait to cheer you guys on for the rest of your guys' careers. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Boom, Perfect. you got it, bro. Was, hey, was, money. Ethan, yeah. we can't wait to see you in the blue and uh, blue and white, buddy. Nah, Good luck this you. season to both you guys, and uh, yeah, light it up. Hey, keep an eye out at the Canuck game for the Don Cherry guy. Will do. Good. Hey, all right. Thanks, Mike. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, 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 guys. Thanks, guys.